Oh. Sorry, we were a couple minutes late. Oh, you're fine. who brought uh, Big Iron here to show off this morning. We appreciate all the different things to look at. Uh, it's been uh, awesome so far, getting to see all the stuff. Uh, a lot of time here at the end after the service as well. Uh, like the ad that I put on Facebook says, we're not, the church is not responsible for any tickets you get for laying rubber or anything as you're leaving this morning. So, uh, Every man uh, here this morning that's 18 years old and older is going to get a gift. So back here on the table, we've got a menagerie of different types of gifts. I tried to spread it out this year and not have the same type of thing. So we can get to the guys' preferences and something that they'll actually use. So uh, feel free to grab the table in the back. The table in the back, yes. Not the one with the white cover on it. <laughs> Rodney wants to make sure that that's clear. Not the, not the table with all the coins and stuff on it. So get, stay with the one in the back. Good, good Rod. I'm glad, glad you said that. Because <laughs> I would have went across yeah. the table. And uh, this is one of our Go for the Guys Sunday. So uh, back years ago, when I was the uh, men's director back years ago, uh, I read a book by a man named David Murrow. And it was called Why Men Hate Going to Church. And it's a harsh title, uh, but it was effective in the fact that it talked about how over time and through the ages, uh, the churches naturally gravitated to the feminine side. When men were working, they were away from work, back in the Industrial Revolution and different things. And he talks about different aspects of history where the churches kind of gravitated into more of serving in... Uh, uh, catering to the needs and the desires of ladies because they were the, the main attenders. Uh, and he talked about how we need to get back into where we bring the churches back to men as well and have things in the church that, that apply to men and stuff like that. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't think like I don't think every Sunday needs to be Big Iron Sunday. This is going to be the extreme the other direction. I'll just warn you ahead of time. Okay, we're going to have lots of videos, lots of jokes, lots of stuff that we're going to, but we're going to have things that are going to speak to your heart as well. And I hope that that's the case this morning, because ultimately, as a, a men's leader and as a man myself, I want to bring other men to Christ. I want other men to know the Jesus that I know, the man that I know is not the Jesus, the hair model or the guy that floats around in robes. But the Jesus that I know, who was a carpenter and who hung out with fishermen, and I'm sure they had a, a great time together. I can't imagine the jokes Jesus told. I mean, think about that. Can you imagine? What, you know, and, and a lot of times we focus on the miracles of Jesus and all the awesome things he did. Let's say in today's day and age, the biggest miracle is guys, if we just look at Jesus, he had 12 friends. He was an adult man with 12 friends. 
How did that hit you? <laughs> so uh, that's something we have to get back to doing. We have to have this. None of us are Rambos. We've got to be uh, with the group as well. So we're going to try to do that. We're going to try to get some things going for the men. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of ammunition involved. There's probably going to be some the, the gas that's going to get burnt. Some rubber will be burned. You know, there's going to be things that are going to be taking place. Uh, but we want to come back to having some things for men and things that speak to a man's heart. So, and why do we do it? Well, if you look back, this was the inaugural Big Iron Sunday. Well, if that doesn't date something, doesn't it? <laughs> that was uh, June 18th of 2006. That was the, that was the first one we did. Uh, you can see my awesome, I can't remember who I borrowed that uh, biker jacket off of. Rick. Yeah, it was Rick Kuja, a guy I uh, work with. He's since retired, but yeah. Uh, uh, this was some of the things that took place. I can remember uh, when we brought the motorcycles in and, and parked them in the front of the church, uh, thinking this will either be my first big event as a men's director or my last big event as a men's director. I uh, didn't know how that was going to turn out. Pastor Mike and I talked about it ahead of time, and I said, do you think we need to ask permission? He said, Let's ask for forgiveness. <laughs> so, but it worked out really well. Why do we do it? So there's this new statistic that just came out that said 93% of families will follow a father who followed Christ first. Only 17% of families will follow a mother who followed Christ first. And only 3.5% of families are going to follow um, their children who find Christ first. No wonder the enemy is after men. No wonder the enemy is after masculinity and wants to make everyone think that there's something that they're not. No wonder the enemy doesn't want us to have correct gender roles. No wonder the enemy is attacking fathers. No wonder the enemy wants fatherless homes because he knows that the second that father starts following Christ, 93% of those families are going to follow Christ too. As a woman, as a wife, as a mother, this infuriates me. It literally burns in my soul. The fact that the enemy thinks he's got the good come in to my house and attack my house. No, not today, Satan. Literally. Period. This has given me this statistic, just seeing it like on paper. Seeing that has given me a new grace for my husband. It's allowed me to see that the man is and will be attacked in a way different way that women will. And so what it's done is it's allowed me to, to have a bigger grace and more grace for my husband knowing that he's going through all of the things that he's going through and that the enemy is after him because he does have that influence in our family. And he... So there's the... When a man does not feel appreciated in the area of his presence, he becomes a version of a man that he can give you and still survive. And I promise you, you will not like that version. That version of him is silent, frustrated, sharp with his words, non-communicative, because he has to become something that he can survive in. <clears throat> That's all we're going to do what we're going to do. Anybody have any announcements this morning? Sunday is going to be an outdoor service. Uh, so if you're here this week, enjoy Big Iron Sunday. Come back next week and enjoy an outdoor service. 
Uh, that's going to be planned and carried out. I think is McKenna in charge of that. McKenna uh, is in charge of that one. She's going to head that up for us. And uh, afterwards, there's going to be a potluck dinner, uh, which means you some, bring something to share. And there's uh, going to be some meat provided. If you can't bring something to share, talk to me. I'll bring something extra. But uh, if uh, come to that, the meat's provided, and like Debbie said, BYOB. <laughs> so bring, bring your own drink for that uh, next week. No chair. There will there will be chairs though. We're going to have the chairs. Sorry. I thought we were going to make a stand. That's not, not what you told me. Oh. <laughs> I did. Oh. Jody, what do you guys call it? No, You're going to sit crisscross applesauce. <laughs> yes. I, I think the plan is there'll be we'll have the chairs all out here. What they'll be on um, the whole house for like the stage there. Um, and because I, I know the pictures we used was when we had the one outside in front of the church, uh, but this will be in the area where you guys had it before. You haven't had it since I've been here. Pastor Mike did this, and they had it here, uh, and you had the chairs all facing us. So there will be a chair. If you don't like that, those chairs, you can bring one of these black ones out or whatever you want, Whatever's, whatever works for you. If you want to stand, you can stand too. I mean, that's... Uh, if you want to bring your golf cart and sit in it instead of the chairs, that you works. Like a drive in. Huh? You like a drive in service. Yeah, that can be a drive in. Uh, I'm going to send this around as well. This is the uh, Follow 23. Yeah. In December, the youth, uh, any, uh, they're wanting to go to Cincinnati. It's for the 28th, 29th, and 30th. It's the whole denominations are going to meet in Cincinnati for a, the youth convention there for three days. And they have a bus that's coming uh, from the district, or two buses perhaps, uh, to take uh, people there. So we've asked some of you already. If you're interested in going with the youth to that, um, please sign up so we have an idea how many to tell them that we, that we want to take. So teens, uh, whoever's involved, will send us back to, uh, to sign up. Also, the ladies' luncheon for July... July is moved a week later because of a conflict. So if you're planning to come to the ladies' lunches, it's Monday, July 17th. Okay. There's also, uh, Rod wanted me to announce that he has a game over at his table. Uh, he has a bucket over there. Rod, I tried to pick the bucket. I picked the bucket up. I did get it up. Uh, but uh, back. Uh, not good. So, uh, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm not feeling it. So, uh, but yeah, he wants to, uh, offer that anybody wants to, uh, go over and guess how much weight is in the bucket over there of, uh, coins. Once again, remind you that Rod's table is not the giveaway table. So, uh, that bucket is not one of the giveaways. So, <laughs> would appreciate that. Anybody else? I saw the, the pictures the pastor was sharing were, were awesome. It was beautiful. Jody? Um, also, inquiry minds have been asking about the Bible study that we have on Wednesday night. Um, we have a lot of questions that we have now. And after much deliberation and um, things, we are going to um, attempt to hold the garage sale this year, July 21st and 22nd. Um, at this point, it will be scaled down a little bit um, and a little, a little different. Pray for a miracle that we're back in the church by then. Yeah. <laughs> they won't be selling pews at the. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 
All right, uh, one thing I want to give a disclaimer on this. I think Pastor's been practicing this, but from what I've seen in his practice, I don't think it's going to happen. Anymore. As we move with God, it's not the life of him. Giving us the strength to endure. 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 Giving us the strength to endure
Uh, my name's Karen, and I have a fear of repetition. Oh, you have a fear. I said it, I didn't know. Sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> and you are? Um, my name's Ronnie, and I have a fear of awkward silences. <laughs> <laughs> How many silences have to be? That was borderline, that one. Right. Let's try and get a conversation flowing then, shall we? Oh, I'm too. Sorry, I'm late. Ah! <laughs> That's OK. Let me introduce you to everybody. This is Karen. She has a fear of repetition. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I bark at other people's phobias. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, if April showers bring May flowers, what do May flowers bring? June. <laughs> Pilgrims. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, Kitty Pole. <laughs> When you die on your deathbed, you will receive total consciousness. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. It's Bill Connor, Ned. Hey. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. I'm a god. You're a god. I'm a god, not the god. Okay. Oh. Alright, that works. See? See, you just have a scene contact. Uh. Move her, please. Thanks. We are the wretched refuse. You think he's gone? He's not gone. That's the whole point. He's never gone. Is this some radical blue <laughs> <laughs> You see? That was my favorite one. <laughs> okay, this time we're going to have our little uh, honorarium of uh, all the dads and stuff. These are the pictures. So some of these pictures I have acquired over the years from previous Big Iron Sundays. Some of them were sent to me. Uh, it's uh, We've got a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, to go through. So, But uh, I think it's worth it. I think there's a lot of neat pictures and a lot of good memories of, uh, of our dads and dads associated here with the church. <laughs>
if I didn't get any of those right. I think I got them all right. But I, I tried to uh, label the ones that maybe people wouldn't know if there wasn't somebody there standing beside them to give reference or whatever. Uh, the only one that I saw you looking puzzled, the Navy guy was me. The skinny kid with the big ears. Yeah. That was me. So that uh, one there here not too far from the end. So uh, <clears throat> going to have the uh, kids come up and we'll have some kid time. Just a while there, come on up, we'll meet right up here in the front. While they're coming up, I'll ask you one more dad joke. How would you, how do you call a Will Smith in the snow? (laughs) 
Where are they going? They're escaping. Oh. Right up here in front. How do you follow Will Smith in the snow? You follow the Fresh Prince. <laughs> All right, guys, so what do I have on the screen? What are those things up there? Um, Yep, they're signs. Yeah, pretty much. They're, yeah, they're all signs. What are they doing? What's the purpose of those signs? What is the purpose of those signs, do you think? They all have a common, they all have a common thing about them, of what type of sign that they are. Do they know? What are they trying to tell us? How about, how about a warning? Okay. So all those, all those signs are trying to tell us tell us a warning about something. You see the, the curve sign there? I'm a PennDOT guy. I work with signs all the time. So that's a curve sign, warning sign for a curve. The other do not enter sign telling you the traffic's coming the other direction and you're not supposed to go that way. You have a danger sign to keep out. No trespassing. It usually means there's something in there that's going to hurt you. The... The little fire truck there, that's a fire the truck crossing, so that if you hear sirens, you can expect that there's going to be a truck coming out of there. Uh, the little skull and crossbow, that's typically something you don't want to mess with because it's going to be really dangerous, right? Something that's poison or electrical or something like that. So there's also things that uh, in the Bible, God has told us to stay away from things that would tempt us and things that are bad for us, okay? So a lot of times he tells us we just stay away from them completely. We don't, you don't want to get near them, okay? So there's other things in life that we, can, that we can talk about that we can realize that those are instances of things that we don't want to get near. What are some things that you guys don't want to get near in the world? What are some things that you would stay away from? Toxic stuff. Toxic things? Wild animals like lions and bears? Who said that? Sanding. Okay. Sandy, you know what this is. Okay, so Sandy knows this because she, she, she uh, has nightmares about it. But <clears throat> the boys and I went hunting yesterday evening and uh, found a little buddy. Oh, oh, my. Okay. It's it's a garter snake. It can't hurt you. It, there's no no danger in anybody. Oh. Oh. But as a general rule, if you don't know anything about snakes, I play with snakes all the time. My boys know snakes, know what they look like, know which ones are good and which ones are bad. It's usually a good idea because there ones there are ones that can bite you and cause a lot of problems. So as a general rule, you want to stay away from them. Uh, but this guy, this guy here, he's pretty. He was a little feisty when I when I caught him, but he's pretty much given up now. He's just kind of hanging out. So, uh, but I'll let you guys get a chance if you want. You can touch him. Uh, or hold him. What's that? Or hold him. Or hold him? Yeah, we could probably do that. We'll do that here in a second. All right? So does anybody want to touch him before you... No. No? My teeth don't. No. No. What you feel like? Maybe I'll see Andy. Sandy, do you want to? <laughs> you can just throw it at him. Just hold it onto him. Oh my. Oh. 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 He just smell. Why is he sticking his tongue out at you? Huh? Why is he sticking his tongue out at you? Because he wants to. No, he's, he, that's how he smells. So he's, he's smelling. He's trying to figure out what's going on. He's smelling. So that's what he does. They, he, in the roof of his mouth, he's got a little, a little hole in the roof of his mouth. It's called a Jacob's organ. And when he pulls that tongue in, as fast as he's doing that, every time he pulls it in, he's sticking it up in there. And that's how he senses that 
Jacob's oh. working. That's where the sensors are to tell him what. So the particles get on his tongue and he sticks them in there. So that's all he's doing. Okay. So we now hey, it was an accomplishment just to get him here this morning yeah. in the same car with my wife. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so. I tried to hold it. So we now snake handling church. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so if you guys want, you can come. I'm good. Here's the candy. 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 Here's I could probably go like 10 miles away. <laughs> and, and they fly. Yeah. Thanks, <laughs> like some. It's a common poisonous Oh, no, it's just for Eugene next week. Hey, guys, the snake got out last week. It's in the ministry center. I'll watch online. Yeah, the pastor says he'll watch online too. All right, what did the janitor say when he jumped out of the closet? Supplies. Supplies. <laughs> Public service announcement. Men, listen up. This is what wives want. Okay, so, Paul, so here is what the wives want. We don't know what we want to eat, but we don't like any of your ideas. And we want to save money and eat at home, but the idea of cooking is exhausting and we don't want to. We want to sleep all the way through the night uninterrupted. But when our child wakes up, we want to be the one to comfort him. We want you to do the laundry, but you have to do it our way. But we don't want to explain to you how our way is. We just want you to know. We want to go out on dates. But if we ask you to go on a date, we're mad because you didn't ask us to go on the date. We want to lose weight, but we don't want to go to the gym. Or eat right. Or eat in moderation. When you start to go get food and you ask if we want something, we say no. We want you to get us something from there that we like. It's really that simple. <laughs> All right, guys. Should be perfectly clear now, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Here, I want one of those. One piece of meat. What's going on? Get you some, huh? Where are you going to go now? Well, you can't speak up by anybody now. You think you're better than me? Well, you think, oh, I like the way you drive. We don't think you. What? Huh? Me out. The truck buggy, a revolutionary idea. Revolutionary idea you'll only find in one place. Where'd you find this place? Hey! You know it costs a lot to park here. I'm not gonna pay you any money. Well, then you're gonna pay another way. Yeah? The trunk monkey. The trunk monkey theft retrieval system. <laughs> I don't know. It, it cut off the him throwing him over the bridge there at the end. So. It made me think when I looked out there and looked at the size of the trunk because he's old cars, how big of a monkey you can get in there. You can get a double barrel or multi shot. At this time, we're going to uh, have praise and prayer requests. We take our uh, praises and prayer requests, and then uh, we'll uh, have a song, and then we'll have prayer. Pastor, if you would pray, please. Uh, any requests or praises that you want to bring before the congregation this morning?
spoke with a grandfather this week, a 22-month-old grandson who was diagnosed with a, a uh, disease that affects the nervous system, and basically, he don't last more than a couple of years after that. So remember him in prayer. Remember Frank and Cindy, Frank still in, in ICU. Hey, Frank's still in ICU. Pray for Gladys. She fell and hurt her back. I just want to share a praise this morning that. Uh, this week, uh, and I think, I mean, today is, is why it was taking place. Uh, this week was a, was a terrible attack on myself, uh, my family in general, just some of the stuff that's going on. Uh, but if, if, if I sat down and told you the list of things, you'd be, uh, it'd be obvious that uh, the enemy is attacking. And uh, uh, I, I, it's been tough. It, it was a tough week. I'd reached out to Pastor at one point, and I uh, thank you for he sent me a scripture that really, uh, really hit and helped. Uh, but I just praise God that that no matter when we step out, when we try to do and, and trust me, folks, if you step out and you step out and you try to do something to further the kingdom, you're going to get attacked. Uh, Saint wants you sitting in the pew, comfortable. And he doesn't want you out there doing things for Jesus, reaching people. And if you do that, you're going to get attacked. And uh, uh, I'm just too dumb to give up when I get attacked. So um, I'm obstinate that way, I guess. But uh, I'll try harder. So uh, we're going to do that. But uh, just uh, keep that in mind. Uh, I appreciate your prayers. And for all the, the leaders of the church and uh, be praying for our, uh, our our leaders of our country as well. Uh, it's so so obvious that we need to turn back to Jesus and and some of His precepts. It's it's unbelievable the stuff that we're we're doing and we're allowing to be done. So, uh, if you would stand with me, and uh, I'm going to play this song. Some of you probably know Jeremy Camp. This is one of my favorite songs. Feel free to sing along. Also, just feel free to listen and, and enjoy the the. Uh, the word
answer this week? Anybody? Yes. Yes, Beverly, come over to the hospital with, from the blood clot. I had four treatments, and my blood was 7.3. It's 9.6. So they're working, but there's some yeah. medicine around that makes you shake. Uh -huh. So just pray that that goes away. Yeah. Other than that, the treatments are working. Good, good. Anyone else want to praise the Lord for what he's done? He answered something you've asked for? I want to pray for my daughter. Yep. Yep. Praise God. Amen. We pray and he answers, yes. Yes, fantastic. Darlene's got her potassium up, and yeah, her, her, and her and Frank was on two ends of the spectrum. His was two. We don't waste our breath by talking to you, and we don't tell you what to do, Lord. But we ask you, and you, in your grace and your mercy, listen to mere human beings as we ask for things that we feel that we need. Thank you, Lord, for bringing Beverly home from the hospital and bringing Cindy Briggs home. We ask you, Lord, to bring Frank home as well, Lord, that you would continue to touch him and be with Cindy as riding the roller coaster of emotions, Father. Thanks for the potassium being up for Darlene. Continue to touch her and watch over Butch, Lord, and, and help him, Father, with the health situation he's got going on as well. And Father, we ask you to help this grandpa, Lord, who has infection. That's, we pray that you'd open up a bed for him where he needs to be in Pittsburgh and may be able to find the health and the healing that he needs there The answer the situation. Help those who are worried and waiting to find a place. Heavenly Father, we praise you for all that you've done. We worship you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, even when you don't answer the prayer that the way we think we are, you ought to, you still are answering the need that we have of our heart. That you know what we need. And you said what, what you see even in private, you will answer. We praise you, Lord, for what you're going to do. We thank you for answered prayers, Lord. We thank you for the ones that were given, Lord. It's hard, it's hard up here. Nice belt. Good job. You've used that on somebody, haven't you? Yeah, girls at school. Yeah. Where do boats go when they are sick? The boat dock. <laughs> Sandy, did you hear the rumor about butter? No, I did not. I'm not going to spread it. <laughs> What did the baby corn say to the mama corn? Where's popcorn? <laughs> okay, that should be the last one, so you'll be happy about that. There we go. Now, now we got some appreciation. <laughs> Who touched me? There's a story in the gospel where Jesus is walking through a crowd. And all of a sudden he's like, who touched me? And the dudes were like, uh, everybody's touching you. He's like this. But he says, no, no, no. Power departed from me. I know somebody touched me. And it was this one woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years. Everybody was bumping up on Jesus. But one woman came up and touched just the outside of his garment with faith in her heart. And she was healed in a moment. This is what I know. You could be in big crowds like this, you could be sitting in church buildings like this, and not actually encounter God because you show up with no faith. I'm telling you, Jesus responds to faith. You can show up, touch Him in faith, and power. Make sure you're not just bumping into them like the crowd, but you're seeking and pursuing Him in faith. Reach out your own hand and grab it. Good word. What that is. Apparently it's not going to work on you. 
So that's supposed to be the countdown timer so that you guys know when I'm supposed to stop talking. It's not going to work, so I guess I'll just keep going. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Sandy, Sandy's got Mickey on the, on the job. Just so you guys know, Sandy Firehawk has a Mickey Mouse watch. <laughs> okay? So, at school board meeting, she sits beside me at the school board meeting. Just I think it's just, I don't know, it was, I think they just like to see the fireworks out of them. But, so Sandy sits beside me, and throughout the meeting, every once in a while, the president goes, Sandy, what time is it? And she'll tap her watch, and her old Mickey Mouse will go, it's 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> so Sandy back here going, and she's, she's watching. So Mickey's watching me. So, uh, oh, yeah. two things I can, the things I can tell you about myself is, is that uh, I have struggled with my faith for a long time. Uh, when I was a teenager, I went to church all the time. I went with my grandmother and my dad. Uh, I was one of those kids early on in my life. And uh, so, but when I was a teenager, when mom and dad started uh, having problems with their marriage and stopped going all together, my sister and I continued to go. We went with my grandmother and continued to keep on with that faith. But it wasn't until, however, that I was in the Navy that I actually really seriously came to know Jesus and then got serious with God through some folks that I met there. And... Uh, the story just goes on from there, but I can tell you that it's the most important thing I ever did and the peace that I have now knowing that that's taken place and that I know what's going to happen to me when I draw my last breath. So this morning, I just wanted to cover one real quick thing that I like to talk to people about and I've posted it online before and I've got talked to people uh, that I've had opportunity to talk to to tell you that there are two questions that you have to know the answer to before you breathe your last breath. Two. There's two that you need the answer to. The first of all, first one is, who is Jesus? Jesus asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? And the disciples had all kinds of answers, right, Pastor? They had either, uh, John, the John the Baptist, you're the reincarnation of uh, the prophets. You, you know, there's all kinds of answers that come out of that. And who was that? I think it was Peter said, you're the son of God. So there's only, I, I hear all the time, I've, I met a Jewish uh, fellow one time that talked about Jesus. And he said, well, Jesus was a great prophet. He can't be a great prophet. I've met uh, some Muslim people that say Jesus was a great man. He can't be a great man. He is either God or he is the worst tyrant that's ever lived. Jesus cannot say the things that he has said and not either be a lunatic, a liar, or Lord. So you can't accept it. You can't say Jesus was a good man, Jesus was a prophet, Jesus was any of those things because Jesus either has to be a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. Follow my reasoning. Liar. He has to be a liar because he told things and claimed things of himself that he knew to be untrue and fooled everybody. Or he was a lunatic, just bat crap crazy, and had no idea what he was talking about, and was just claiming stuff. Or he was Lord, and he was who he said he was. Those are the only three options, folks. That's the first question that you have to have answered before you breathe your last breath. The second one is, who does he say I am? Who am I in him? After I breathe my last breath, when I meet him... Is he going to say, hi, my beloved son, welcome into glory? Or is he going to say, like the Bible says, depart from me because I didn't know you. Those are the only two answers. Because he can't say, you're a good dude. He can't say, well, you did a lot for other people. He's going to have to say either, I knew you or I knew you not. So if you don't know the right answer to those two questions this morning, please talk to someone. Come and talk to myself, pastor. There's other uh, men and women in the congregation that would love to talk to you.